average, we're going to see more fires, higher intensity fires, more smoke, and all the health impacts associated with wildland fire smoke, we'll see increased across much of the globe. And these are erratic, high intensity fires that are difficult to impossible to extinguish. There's all sorts of reasons, power lines, for example, railways, sparks off bad brakes can cause fires. And then there's the campfires and the smoking and the four-wheel four -wheel vehicles, we call them quads. And then there's arson. called the wildland urban interface. And yes, more people are building in the woods, in acreages, and because it's gorgeous, okay? There's trees, there's wildlife, there's flowers. But the thing is, when you do that, you do increase your risk of fire, unless you remove fuels around your house, but people don't want to cut down their trees because, hey, I want, I want the trees. thing about human-caused fires is they are all preventable. You don't want wood shingles on your roof because, you know, homes burn down typically because of burning embers being carried by the wind that land on a combustible surface and start the fire and burn your house down. Power lines, uh, we can bury them or harden the systems so the likelihood of a fire starting, it would be greatly reduced. We probably don't do enough of this forest closures. Only a few critical days are our really problem days. On those days, no industry, no tourists, nobody. You just lock it down and say, the danger is too high. We'll wait until things get better. And it's only a couple of days. Yes, it's inconvenient, um, but just look at the, you know, look at the consequences of some of the fires we've seen recently.